Good morning, good afternoon, good day, and uh, all those good things. Happy, happy Mother's Day. And I hope you kids, uh, all of you with kids in the house, kids, I hope you did something for mom. Dads, I hope you honored mom. Sons, I hope you're calling your mom. Daughters, call your mom and let her know that you love her and miss her. And happy, happy Mother's Day. And don't, uh, don't forget to contact your moms and mothers and grandmothers on Mother's Day. And uh, you got time. Uh, you can't run to Olive Garden if you're here in Decatur or anything else like that. So uh, take time to call your family and let them know you love them and you miss them. Hey, uh, a couple of announcements. We, uh, my family was so honored and uh, so appreciative of everyone who came by this last week just to honk and wave at us. And um, those of you who missed it, don't, uh, don't, it wasn't personal. No one meant for you to miss it or anything like that. It was just, I don't know who arranged it or anything, but thank you, church, for doing that. We were just so happy to see everyone. And we look forward to coming back together. We're doing everything uh, that we're allowed to do within the law to still honor our government, continue to pray for them, as well as reach out to them, let them know that we're not happy with the direction our state is going in so that we can come back together, that we can sing songs together, we can worship together, we can see our kids having Sunday school again, and uh, we can enjoy good fellowship. In honor of Mother's Day today, we did want to show uh, a little video, and uh, you say, we just, you just watched one, that was a funny one. This is the one to actually say, Happy, Happy Mother's Day, and uh, then after this, we'll get started on the rest of the service. Brother Aaron, do you have that video ready, sir? He is ready well, to moms, today is your day. It's a day to say thank you for loving us, caring for us, and guiding us. It's a day to recognize all you do and all you are to us, your perfect, wonderful, amazing children. Thanks for all the early mornings and for taking care of the things we take for granted. Thanks for never giving up on us, even when we stress you out. Thanks for making sure we have what we need and for giving us your heart even when you're sick and tired. Thanks for working hard even when we're a handful and for loving us unconditionally when our attitude is anything but lovable. You're our everything, Mom, and we'd be a mess without you. Today, we thank God for the wonderful gift of you. Happy Mother's Day. you got and i hope you uh i also so many birthdays i'm like i said we're gonna have a big birthday celebration when everyone comes back i think uh kim has a birthday uh today on saturday the day we're filming and emory had a birthday yesterday and was grateful to swing by and say hi to all the kids and uh so many birthdays that we've had over the last last so how many weeks are we into this? So we we at day 79,000, it feels like. Um, but uh, just just happy birthday and love and miss you guys. And moms, we uh, love you. We appreciate you. And uh, thank you for all that you have done and are still doing and will be doing probably uh, forever. And let's have a word of prayer. And we'll get started in today's sermon. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to, uh, the, uh, to just come and worship you, Father, that we can still uh, sing songs about you, Lord, in our homes, that we can still praise you, Lord, that we have a Bible, that we can learn more about you, Lord, that we still have this opportunity to record and, and share a message, Lord, that we can encourage. Father, we ask that this would be a blessing. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm do uh, oh, I just licked my finger there. Last week, we started talking on Psalms 23. And uh, we definitely focused on uh, verse one, number one. We'll get to there in a second. But I'm going to read the passage again. And uh, we're going to have this on the full screen so you can follow along. I know it's difficult for you to have your Bibles out and do this. Some of you are watching on devices you use to look up verses. And I know it's hard and challenging. So we're going to slow it down. That way you can follow here on the screen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know about you guys, but I keep falling more and more in love with this passage as I study it, and I understand why it is uh, actually uh, well received. This is um, my first, you ready? My first time ever preaching through Psalms 23. Uh, for some reason over life, I've just heard it so many times in movies and shows that you just uh, say it's a very common passage, uh, but yet sometimes the familiar stuff is the things we need to review. And uh, we get so used to it, we forget the importance and the beauty and what God has in store for us. Uh, last week when we started, we looked at this thought. Uh, I put them all together. First, the Lord is my shepherd. God is our shepherd. Uh, he is, Jesus first himself, as the good shepherd. And uh, we realize that over and over again, that God is the uh, good shepherd. He is our shepherd. The big thing we focus on, though, is, he, is he yours? Can you show ownership? Can you call him my God, my Savior, my Shepherd, uh, my friend. And uh, it's also remarkable that God would refer to himself as a shepherd because of how uh, the task is viewed by so many societies as low and how much work it is to take care of sheep. And I uh, did more and more studying and reading about sheep this week. And let me just tell you, there's so much there that God has to take care of with his, his sheep. And uh, we realize over and over again, that Jesus Christ, when he we is our shepherd, we won't want. He is the bread of life. He is the everlasting water. He is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And, and he will satisfy all of our needs. And uh, the expression, I shall not want, is uh, all my needs are supplied by the Lord, my shepherd. I shall not want also means I decide to not desire more than what the Lord my shepherd gives and that's huge for us christians to be content in whatever god has given us and uh we re that goes back to so many sermons and thoughts that we've said over and over again remember all things are in his hands god is in control a and uh don't let these songs we sing as a kid be just a cute thing that we do for little kids apply them to your your life and we used to sing the song he's got the whole world in his hands and we used to sing that over and over in his kids and some of you led it in junior church but now that you're an adult and you're not getting things the way that you want uh in your life in the timing you want you're trying to act like god's not in control let me tell you god is in control uh, everything is in his power the bible tells us the waters fit in the palm of his hand the, the universe is the span of his hands uh the earth is, is nothing to him and he holds everything together and, and and realize that he spoke into existence everything we see the only thing he came down to form was mankind uh, so uh it's important to realize that when we say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want uh that i decide to not desire more than what the lord my shepherd gives moving on though from last week and we're actually going to stop right there i need to stop let's pray and then we'll uh go forward from there heavenly father lord i ask that you would bless this sermon father that you would help people that it would help them in their spiritual life, Lord, that it would encourage them, Father, that we would uplift, Father, and move closer to you in our personal relationships with you. Lord, we love you. We ask you to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, we're going to look at the, the next verse, and, and I don't think we're going to get past this verse. Uh, it starts really, very simple. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and uh not pastors okay pastures make sure you say that word right and uh i always love hearing different accents we had this nice lady uh from from the east coast and she had a little southern twang to her and she called pastor and uh it was funny but uh realize this this phrase comes to so many people the whole verse is he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and leadeth me beside the still waters uh we're gonna look at the full verse today but we have to realize that he maketh me to lie down. Uh, we realize that there are certain things God has to make us do. And the only time he can make you do it is when you actually, first of all, already make him my 
shepherd. You have to put God into a position and give him the authority to work in your life because God, uh, you say there's free will, there is free will, and he wants us to submit to him to let him do the work because when we do things in our hand, we're going to struggle, we're going to fail, we're going to keep messing up over and over again and realize that with God, the impossible becomes possible possible. And in God, we have the strength. In God, he picks us up and sets our feet on the rock. In God, uh, we have the ability to do these things. And God says, I'm going to, when you make me your shepherd, I'm going to give you rest. Uh, I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures. Let me tell you, we really struggle with the concept of getting rest. Now, I'm not saying you're not good at getting sleep. Okay, some of you are too good at getting sleep, I think. I think some of you uh, thrive for your next nap, your next sit down, or anything else like that. And, and, and this isn't talking as much physical rest as spiritual rest. Spiritual rest. Uh, we're very good at taking care of ourselves. Let me tell you an expression I hear in churches a lot, just all over actually. When God closes a door, can he finish it for me? Somewhere he opens up a window. You ever heard that expression before? I despise that expression because in my mindset, if God shut the door, that means he doesn't want me to go th forward. But yet us Christians, modern day people, we keep saying, God doesn't know what I really know. And, and I'm going to keep going forward and making this happen and make it, make it go forward. And God's over like, I shut the door. I, I want to give you rest. Remember, uh, I'm satisfied with what God has given me. I shall not want. Uh, I decide to not desire more than what God is. Uh, God has offered, but with the door shut, I'm not going to rest till I somehow find a way to get through it. And, and uh, I can tell you as a kid, who was thrown into many windows because back in the day, why call a locksmith that there's a window open? Just throw the kid up, goes in through the window, he walks through and locks the door. And uh, I bet you some of you have probably had that happen to you. Your parents locked out of the house and they shove you through a window or something like that. Uh, uh, but I can tell you, crawling through windows it is not um, easy. You get bruised, you rub against things, you got to wiggle in there a little bit sometimes, but the doors we're meant to go through. Uh, we have this problem where we don't like to rest. Uh, we don't like to rest. Be, uh, we have this unwilling attitude to submit to God that we need to rest. And God is over here saying, listen, I don't understand why. Because I just want you to lie down in green pastures. Uh, I want you to lie down in the green pastures. Um, I think I have my verses out of order here. Make sure really quick. Okay, I do, but I'll fix it here. Just like a normal Sunday morning, I got something out of order. Here we go. Uh, remember this verse here uh, in Luke chap chapter 15, uh, when given the parable of the story of a shepherd who has lost a sheep and he finds it. The shepherd takes the sheep and puts it on him uh, and, and puts it on his shoulders. And when he hath found it, he layeth him on his shoulders rejoicing because he gives the sheep rest because the savior knows that we need rest because we have been in this world and we are not to be of this world but apart from it and we realize that we have issues and, and mark chapter 6 verse 31 when speaking to his disciples jesus christ tells them come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while and, and uh, they were many comes and goings, had no leisure and so much time to eat, realized that we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. I have this verse here. This is Jesus Christ speaking in Mar Matthew chapter 11, 28. And uh, we'll get it up on the screen. I think you will. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you, what's the word right there? Rest. He wants to give us rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You realize that Jesus, our shepherd, has been calling us and telling us to come into him that we can have rest rest. It goes back to one, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you cannot have the rest that you need in your life. Uh, Jesus Christ gives us. And the second thing you have to think about this is are you listening to the voice of the shepherd? Are you listening to the instructions 
from the shepherd uh, to tell him to lay down. Uh, today, some of us need to pray to God and say, Lord, I surrender myself to listen to your voice when you tell me to rest. And I'm going to ask God, God, uh, what kind of rest do I need in my life? Are you telling us all to go on vacations? You need to talk to God about that. But I am telling you, there are certain things that we aren't willing to give up to get the rest that we need. Let me tell you, I was reading a commentary about this. And I forget the guy's name, but I copied it in my notes because that's how I am. And it says this, uh, sheep will not lay down naturally. They are timid and they are afraid. Uh, because they are social animals, they will not lay down if there is friction among the sheep. Uh, if flies or parasites are troubling them, they won't lay down. If sheep are anxious about food or hungry, they will not lay down. Rest comes because the shepherd, God, our shepherd, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, has dealt with our fear, our friction, our flies and issues that we have that are surrounding us and has made sure that we have the food that we need in our life. That is why it's so uh, close, uh, but so sad. It's so sad that so many Christians are as anxious as parents getting their house ready for Thanksgiving or Christmas with family coming over. You, you might have forgotten what that's like to have family come over lately, but if you can remember uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving or e Christmas and all of a sudden everything has to be cleaned or hidden. Uh, you know, we have to clean it right now. We have to get started. We got to start cleaning it. And, and uh, I remember uh, we didn't have any family come up to where we lived. We lived in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, But we would go downstairs, state, and sometimes we'd show up early to help. And it was like, quick, you got to mop the floors, clean the restrooms, clean this, clean that. Make sure you take the trash out because, God forbid, someone realize that you throw Q-tips in the trash can in the restroom that you look in the house that you live in. So the trash has to be empty in order for company to ever come over because it can't look like anyone lives there. You have to look like a hotel resort. And you live with this anxious, anxious spirit about you. And, and you're at friction and odds with other Christians. You're not even sure why. And God's over there saying, this isn't my flock because my flock, I want to give them, I, I take away their fear. Remember, it says fear not. I, there shouldn't be Christian amongst Christians. Great peace are they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them uh, unless what? You you dress differently, you talk differently, listen to different music, you you, you know, like different styles of things, you know, and all of a sudden that creates the issues, the flies and other things. We realize over and over again that in order to get rest, that's why he says he maketh me. We need rest. And God says, I will give you rest when I am your shepherd. I will take care of you and give you perfect rest when I am your shepherd. The next thing is this. He leadeth me beside the still waters. First, he's going to make us do something because sadly we won't do it on our own. And in case you're wondering, sheep will literally walk themselves to death because they're sheep. And, and that's why he has to make us. And Christians, you will literally earn and work yourself to death spiritually where you're burnt out, dried up, and you're ready to quit on everything and you leave uh, and you try to walk away from it all because you just can't do it anymore. And the next thing is, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Uh, in Psalms 31.3, it says, For thou art my rock and my fortress, uh, fortress, therefore for thy name's sake, lead me. And guide me. God knows that we need rest so that he can lead us to the next part of our life and that is to the waters that still and will restore our souls. Jesus is the one who gives us the still waters. The, the shepherd knows that sheep need green pastures and he also knows that we need water. Uh, the shepherd leads. I'm trying to get to my, my points here. Uh, This is the verse right here in John 7, 37. It says this. In the last days, in the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But as this spake, he of the Spirit, which they, <laughs> which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. You see, we realize that God leads us to perfect rest and then to a place of perfect peace. 
that peace that you've been longing for in your life, that peace that has been uh, that has just been absent in your life that you feel like you can't get a hold of and you wonder why over and over again you just have this spiritual uh, anxiety about you and you can't understand it. A lot of it has to do with the fact that one, he's your shepherd, but you're not listening to him. You're not satisfied with what he's been giving you. And we're not listening to him as he tries to make us lie down and get cared for and give us what we need. Because let me tell you, he wants to give us what we need. Why is it in the prayer when he says, this is how ye ought to pray? He says, give us this day our daily bread because daily God wants to meet our needs and he will meet them. He is faithful to daily meet them. Uh, God wants to give us rest and God wants to give us perfect peace and this only can come about when we can go back and say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want because i'm not looking for outside things i'm not looking for things that that he's not offering i'm going to be satisfied with he gives me and and realize that he wants to care for me he wants to give me the good food he wants to give me the good rest he wants to lead me to water so that i can keep thriving and and what's the benefit of that Uh, one person the first thing is spiritual nourishment the second thing is spiritual restoration which is why you see he restoreth my soul and we will talk about that next week church i hope today you realize that christians Christians need spiritual rest. Christians need to find the perfect rest and the perfect peace that can only come from a relationship with God our Father and Jesus Christ as our great and good shepherd. If you're here today and you're listening and you said, I still haven't accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I hope you reach out to our church that we can have someone reach out to you, call you, talk to you, even drive by, sit on your porch and, and talk to you uh, with six feet apart, sit on your porch and talk to you about what it means to ha- know Jesus Christ as your Savior, what it means to call him my shepherd, my God, my Savior, my friend, my Father, and understand that eternal forgiveness that is given to us through Jesus Christ. Church, I love you. Let's close out in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for being our shepherd. Lord, thank you for caring for us, loving us, Lord, and just showing us uh, the truth in this passage, Lord, how you truly do want to make us uh, have peace. Father, how you truly want us to have rest. Lord, help us to claim that rest that we might flourish in you, Father, because every person needs rest. You set the example for us in the Bible Father, that on the seventh day you rested, Lord, to know and to show us that we need to listen to you when you tell us to rest, that we rest, that we don't keep trying to push things forward out of our own will and and flesh, Lord, that we listen and submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Father, we'd ask for that perfect peace that comes from rest, Lord, that we would continue to be an example of the love that the Father has in us. Lord, we love you. We ask you to bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you, church, and I will see you guys next Sunday.